In this short v video lecture, I want to consider the end of education and what we mean by th this term. Do we mean the finish of education or do we mean the purpose of education? I'm going to introduce Neil P P Postman and his book titled The End of Education, in which he examines the, the meaning of the end of education where one interpretation invites a redefining of the purpose of schooling and education and therefore imagines an alternative f future for education. F following that, I will introduce Zizé and draw on a recent discussion by Wall and per Perrin who take what they uh, term a Zizekian gaze on education in considering how we might respond to the commodification of higher education before ending with a, a uh, proposal that rethinking the education policy arena as a martial arts space might be helping might be helpful in shaping our r responses what do we mean by the end of education to suggest that education is disappearing might sound the dramatic, scaremongering even. After all, if we cast a c cursory glance around us, we can see that the business of education appears healthy. For example, the higher education participation rate c calculated by n national statistics for the Department for Education shows an increase from 42% to 49% between 2006-7 and 2015-16. This means that nearly half of young people living in England enter higher education by the age of 30. Globally, there appears to be no evidence for the waning of formal education. The primary, the primary enrolment rate, according to UNICEF, whilst falling short of universal participation in primary schooling, reveals that around 91% of primary aged children were enrolled in a school in 2015. Similarly, B. Yester, in his 2012 article, in considering the disappearance of the teacher, points to similar ev evidence. Far from the teacher di disappearing, uh, B.S. declaims, we are witnessing an erosion of a particular style of teaching, indicating that we need to examine what we mean by terms such as the end of education. So, therefore, in considering the end of education, a critical question is this question that I've posed, what do we mean by the end of e education? Is this a question about participation in f formal education provision? It would seem not, based on participation rates alone, there is no end in, in sight. So the questions that we need to ask about the end of ed education are about the relevance of education and the purpose of education in c c contemporary societies and our response to these I issues. In the end of education, P P P P Postman makes a distinction between sc schooling and education, arguing that n not much education takes place in sc schools. Rather than dismissing schooling outright, however, Postman invites the possibility that schools can enable pupils to learn how to live a life, as opposed to teaching pupils how to earn a living. These, these are two, two different things. The problem, he discusses, is that those concerned with schooling rarely talk about the end of education. Instead, he observes that politicians, policymakers, and educational experts focus on the means rather than the ends of schooling. So, conversations about schooling are invariably focused on how to school. For example, 
academization and the role of the private sector in, in, in schooling. Or we might be asking questions about how to make teaching more effective. We might ask about how we can assess learning and what is the preferred form of testing. We might inquire as to how we can monitor the performance of, t of teachers and to improve their effectiveness. Or we might consider how we can best use technology to improve attainment. These topics might be interesting or they might not be. Maybe we should be concerned about things or maybe we shouldn't care. What these topics or questions have in common, argues Postman, is that they fail to consider what school are for. As he says in the premise of his book, The End of Education, it is as if we are a nation of technicians consumed by our expertise in how something should be done, afraid or incapable of thinking about why. In terms of the end of education then, Postman reminds us that end has at least two m m meanings. The end can refer to the purpose or it can refer to the finish. If we focus our discussion on the purpose of education, then we must ne necessarily also consider the future of education. If you go on to read the rest of the book, you will see that the end of education may be viewed pessimistically pessimistically we can diagnose all the faults that there that there are within the current system of schooling of schooling our children and indeed do the same in respect of higher education however in diagnosing faults we are also invited to reconsider the p p purpose of education and postman's pessimism is countered by such a reconsideration In thinking about the end of education, I want to want to invite you to turn to Zizé to consider how we might use his ideas in thinking about the end, as in the purpose of education and therefore the future direction of education. And in particular, how we might resist particular trends in education. Before we go on to doing this, it is worth spending a few moments introducing Zizé. Zizé. Very br briefly, he's a Slovenian philosopher whose works have developed a materialist conception of uh, ideology, Lacanian psychoanalysis, as well as engaging in film criticism. He stars in the film Zizé about himself, but has also made films uh, such as The Pervert's Guide to Cinema and The Pervert's Guide to uh, ideology that I that I recommend you watch. He may also be considered an academic celebrity attracting descriptions such as the Elvis of cultural theory and the Foucault of our time. It is all too easy to look at education and accept that uh, that is the way things are. We have taken for granted assumptions about education and the way education or schooling should be done. And for example, how teaching and learning should ha happen. Wallen Perrin in the 2015 book recommend that we wear a pair of critico ideological g g glasses when taking a Zizekian g gaze at education. These, they argue, help us to look awry at our educational life and notice the taken for granted things around us. When we wear these g glasses, we see that things are not always what they seem. W one area that we can focus our Zizekian gaze upon is uh, the commodification of uh, higher ed 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 education. If we understand education as a product, then we may choose to consume that product based upon weighing up various options and choosing the, the right product uh, for ourselves and what we want and what we want to get out of education. One such source, source of information is the 
KISS widget on the Unistats website. So KISS is short for Key Information Sets. And this provides the student consumer with information about c courses for their consideration. Wall and P Perrin go on to dis uh, discuss how this KISS data set is comparable with the type of information that we take into account when buying insurance, taking our loan, and buying other kind of consumer goods and so on. So education is therefore co commodified alongside other consumer goods and services. And what Wall and Perrin do is they ask how this information might shape how we think about education. So do we now see a university degree in the same way as buying holiday or tra travel insurance or a new car? Maybe we do. And we might be disturbed by this or we might welcome it. Zizé is not alone in considering the commodification of education. In fact, this topic is not obscure in the social and political sciences. For example, we can look at Miller, the 2010 article, who claims that students purchase a higher education course because it enables them to acquire credentials as g g graduates in the form of qualifications that other job seekers may not have. Thus, it gives them an advantage when seeking a job. But this is not to say that this is just about acquiring the credentials of a qualification, but a higher education degree, especially one that is vocationally orientated, offer for sale skills which the graduate can use to enter and participate in a particular pr profession. Again, this is nothing n new. If you wish to become an engineer, you uh, decide to embark on an engineering degree in order to gain the accreditation and to gain the sk skills with which to pursue this as a, as, a, as, a, as a career. Miller also suggests that students may purchase the commodified product of, higher of a higher education degree because of an expectation that they will do so, much like with other consumer products. This idea of education becoming increasingly commodified is nothing new, as I've said before. However, Zizé offers another perspective, arguing that these trends are deepening, embedding themselves into the way we think, the things we do, and ultimately who we are. This is how we make sense of the world, and this is what Zizé calls the symbolic order. The symbolic order provides us with reference points with which we make sense of reality, and we need this symbolic order. As Zizé says, there, there are the rules and meanings that I follow blindly, out of custom, but of which, upon reflection, I can become at least partially aware, such as common grammatical rules. And there are rules that I follow, meanings that haunt me, unbeknownst to me, such as unconscious prohibitions, then there are rules and meanings I am aware of, but have to act on the outside as if I am not aware of them, which one passes over in silence in order to maintain the proper appearances. The symbolic space acts like a standard against which I can measure myself. And that is from uh, Zizé's 2006 uh, uh, work, The Parallax View. So we need this symbolic order because we cannot get at the reality which lies below the language we use. The symbolic order is, is the symbolic order is uh, made up of floating signifiers which help us fix on a particular signification, providing a, a quilt or a fixing effect to grasp the reality we are seeking to portray and to, put and to understand. 
So we can understand this symbolic order if we apply this to the way we think about education. So the labels pupil and student are signifiers. So these labels signify the people who teachers and lecturers engage with on an everyday basis. For example, I use the label students to refer to you, the students on this module. Without these labels, what would we have? Well, there are other labels we could use. We can and we do have alternatives. Learners, learning partners even, or customers. However, these labels too are signifiers, and without them, it is unclear what we are referring to. Again, what do we have without these signifiers? How can I make sense of the reality I'm faced with, a room full of people studying this module, without using l labels? These labels, or signifiers, as Zizé claimed, are, claimed, are violent forms of simplifications, but they serve a purpose in enabling us to make sense of the world. And, of course, these labels, these signifiers, are not n neutral. They represent an educational reality, but also help to create it. We can consider the ways in which education might be represented. So, for example, rankings of school performance represent the attainment levels of pupils. League tables of universities, again ranked, uh, provide information on how a university uh, or a department or, or a particular course score on the measures such as student retention, employability, satisfaction amongst other things. These are labels too. These rankings and product reviews matter, however, as it is through these representations that consumers, whether that be parents making school choice decisions or prospective students selecting a degree programme, come to understand education. They use these signifiers to understand and to make ch ch choices. Counter arguments that these are not the reality of education matter very little as we cannot reach the reality lying behind these signifiers. We may welcome this representation of education and believe that schooling and higher education is and should be a c commodity that we consider alongside uh, the purchase of our next washing machine. Or we might be uncomfortable with the commodification of education. And if we are uncomfortable, how should we respond? Well, we can be pessimistic about this. We can believe that resistance is futile. We can bemoan the trend, but ultimately remain passive. Or we can resist. But resistance comes in different f f forms. Zizé suggests that the predictable ways associated with the educational left are futile. So, for example, we would uh, make reasoned, logical demands that this data um, that is used to represent higher education doesn't really represent higher education. And we could um, encourage prospective students to consider a more holistic value to education. But where would, will such demands get us, given that education is commodified? And we can predict the ready-made answers that this is the culture that we are in, that this is what students want, that this is the basis upon which students make decisions, and that therefore we have to comply, and so on. Alternatively, as Zizé argues, we need to bombard those in power with strategically well-selected, precise, finite de demands which can't be met with the same excuse. And finally, C Cooley also offers this suggestion in terms of how we might respond to trends towards increasing commodification of e education. To see the world as a battlefield enables us to develop strategies in response to what we see 
and perhaps get what we want. And as Cooley uh, argues, we must enter the policy-making arena as if it were a mixed martial arts cage with the method of combat open and the outcome unknown. In conclusion, then, we have considered that the end of education does not mean the disappearance of education, or indeed schooling, but is an invitation to consider the purpose of education. By introducing Zizé, I have invited you to wear crypto-ideological glasses in an attempt to see that things are not necessarily the way they appear. We have used these glasses to see that the way that we understand education is through representations of education, using signifiers, and that in this perspective the reality remains hidden. Commodification of education, whilst not new, is embedding into the way we understand, relate to and experience education. As an alternative to cynicism, but ultimately passive resistance, which would uh, only produce predictable responses from policy m- makers, Zizekian thought offers the possibility of engaging in a martial arts form of thinking in the education policy arena. The outcome from this is unknown. Un-